The global auto industry plunged even deeper into recession in 2019, sales dropping more than 4% as demand in China and India plummeted. The slump is likely continuing this year with big ramifications for the global economy. So how does the auto industry adapt to survive? Ralph DeBass is CEO and founder of W Motors. He joins us live now. Ralph, thank you so much for being with us. So the big theme at Davos this year is the climate crisis. Uh, just talk to us about how the rising popularity of electric cars um, and the role the environment is playing in the auto sector and how that is changing the landscape. Sure. I mean, today we're living in an automotive revolution. That's what we're calling. Everybody's fighting to become the leader in electric mobility and future mobility, as we call it today. Um, however, things are not as easy as we think. It's not about only making a car. It's about building the whole infrastructure that comes with it, the charging stations, and everything that's related to building a complete ecosystem for autonomous and electric, uh, electric vehicles. And I believe China was a leader at some point. The U.S. are also leaders. And the Middle East is growing today to try to become leaders in their own way for electric cars and the future of mobility. One of the biggest uh, challenges right now is this slowdown we're seeing in the global auto sector because of slowdown in China and also trouble in India as well. How is that also affecting the landscape? It is affecting, I mean, drastically. A few years ago, we used to see a big boom when it comes to electric cars. And we saw a lot of, a lot of uh, countries allying together, a lot of companies allying together as well to develop technologies in, a be in the best way and a cheaper way as well. But today, with what's happening politically around the world, it's not as easy as we think. Geographically, it's not as easy to adapt you know, different factories and different locations, to have companies allied together to try to develop new technologies. So there are challenges when it comes to that. And that's why you have small players coming out. We are one of them to try to develop technologies in a different way and try to adapt a neutral platform that can be positioned in every single country, in every single government that can utilize it in the best possible way. But it's not as easy as we think. So one of the sort of key technologies in terms of the future of the car sector is, of course, self-driving cars. The technology already exists. It's here with us now. But how long do you think it will take for the car industry around the world to fully adapt to uh, autonomous vehicles? Well, we'll be surprised. I mean, technology is way more advanced than we think when it comes to autonomous driving. Uh, the technology is there, and it's been there for many years. However, the regulation is still being in the works, the infrastructure is still being in the works. 5G is a big factor today, which is, thanks to 5G, it's going to accelerate the de development much faster. But I believe we have another two to three years of testing before we start seeing autonomous cars driving on the road. In the next seven years, we're going to start seeing zones and sectors being adapted for autonomous driving. And hopefully by 2030, we're going to see a big chunk of autonomous cars driving on the roads for the public and for different services. And I do believe in it. I think the future is autonomous driving, and we're getting there much faster than we think. OK, just want to talk about W Motors more specifically. You're opening a new manufacturing plant uh, in Dubai. Just talk to us about your company's strategy here and what sort of capacity we're looking at <coughs> with this plant. Well, we are the first brand of cars coming from the Middle East, as positioned as luxury brands, supercars and hypercars that we started in 2007, and we launched the car in 2012. But we adapted with the change that the, the region is having and the whole world is having when it comes to smart mobility and future technologies. So the company shifted towards being a traditional automotive manufacturer to a more electric uh, vehicle division and autonomous driving and government cars as well. So the, the factory we, we opened, we just recently did the, the groundbreaking uh, a few weeks ago, and it is actually the first full-fledged automotive facility in the whole region. And we're proud to say that it's going to be based in Dubai to develop technologies not only for normal vehicles, but also for government cars, uh, technologies when it comes to autonomous driving, electric cars, etc. Now, we have a capacity of around 200 vehicles a year only, but we're using it more of an R&D center for behind the scenes to start developing technologies for the governments and start releasing it to the world. That's for the phase one. And phase two is going to have a full-fledged academy where we're going to be start training people for the first time in the automotive sector. The whole goal was to build the automotive industry, to build the ecosystem, the supply chain, and I believe somebody had to start it somehow. And uh, we're proud to be the first to do it. And we believe that within the next few years, many will follow us and many will start using this region to start developing their technologies and exporting the talents and the products to the world. Ralph DeBoss, my friends, thank you so much.